Hello, my name is Garen Daly, and welcome to another edition of Talking with Film Directors at that are going to be in the, the 47th Boston Science Fiction Film Festival. I'm especially pleased to be joined by Jake Wattel, who is actually in Cambodia. So if we have some issues with our uh, Wi-Fi here, please uh, excuse us. But Jake, thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to Boston Sci-Fi. Thank you so much for, for having me. Yeah. One of the first things that Mark, who is our executive producer and uh, director, said, that's not a green screen behind you, is it? No, no, no. I'm, I'm in southern Cambodia. Uh, I'm coming, I've come here after uh, a bit of festival travel in the fall to sort of, uh, you know, come, come back, root down, and um, do some writing. So, so what is yeah, this is my happy place. What is an American boy doing in Cambodia? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, the short-ish version of my story is I, I worked for many years um, as a freelance filmmaker making short promotional videos for nonprofit social impact ventures, little documentary kinds of things, uh, and, and traveling around a lot, um, particularly in the global south, and, and really loved this ability to connect with people from like really vastly different backgrounds from the one that I came from and, and, and to tell their stories. And um, at a certain point, I got a little bit tired of being on the go so much. And this opportunity came up to teach a year long class in filmmaking to um, kids living in Cambodia. And that was, um, yeah, that, that I, I realized that I was like really hungry to go deeper with a single community. And I came here, I, I moved to Phnom Penh for um, a whole year. Uh, in that moment, taught it, taught this year long class in filmmaking and uh, sort of over the course of that time, really got to know the, my students and the community and just fell in love with Cambodia really deeply. And that was in 2014. So it's, you know, it's been a long journey since then. And, and it's Cambodia is Cambodia is a home for me now. So the uh, the film's called Karma Link. It is going to be showing at uh, seven o'clock on uh, Saturday during the film festival, which is a good time. We encourage everyone to come. It's one of the must see films. Um, it's an interesting intersection that you've created here. With the way that we're pitching it is it's Buddhist reincarnation meets AI dream interpretation. Is Is that a pretty good, accurate description for it? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I, I've definitely been talking, talking about it as a Buddhist sci-fi, like the, the rhyming nature of what you, um, how you, how you laid that out. The, the other thing I'd throw into the mix is that there's a, a bit of this, this undercurrent of, um, so sociopolitical drama about development and displacement. Um, something that I bore witness to a lot in my time here was like the, the really rapid, pace of development and the world of sci-fi seems like fertile territory to talk about some of the issues there because you know there's there's often this idea of um you know of of, of progress that that's underpinning a lot of like technological innovation but that's also underpinning this process of development and thinking about how that's complicated was something that i wanted to explore yeah it's you know technology and, and you're right because right now one of our mottos at Boston Sci-Fi is the future is now because we are using technology to be able to talk to you while you're in Cambodia and we're in Boston. And it's, it's, it's awesome, but at the same time, we're also gonna be getting a huge storm in a couple of days. That is a direct result of technology and climate change. So it's a very fertile topic there. But um, let's take a look. Let's look at the trailer for Karma Link. And when we come back on the other side, let's discuss the film a little bit more in depth. Cool. อ้ายมึงเล่นกับเจ้าตัวใครได้ตะฉับปรับล่ะมาก็ล้างก่อนเนี่ยอย่าเข้าไปเจ็บมึงเกียดไอ้ไก่มึงเคยเนี่ยม
Anh đang chơi cam thì đại vi chạm vô vi tàu với thằng đàn em mới cười. I've been searching, seeking, and now finally we meet. You know, when I was uh, watching the trailer and there's that scene where they're walking by, it looks like railroad tracks and modern cities in the background. And I kept thinking, that's a little like Slumdog Millionaire. And I'm wondering if that was an, at all an influence in what you were uh, trying to achieve and whether there's that undercurrent that you had mentioned previously of, you know, restiveness. Sorry, can can you just you cut out very briefly? Did you say Slumdog Millionaire? Yeah, the 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 scene where the kids are walking by the tracks with the uh, high rises in the background, it sort of reminded me, brought a memory back of Slumdog Millionaire, and the same kind of feel that 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 was that I got it. In other words, that here was an economic situation where these really cool kids were in. Yet we we don't necessarily see them, and that's what. Right. And I was wondering if that's well, one of the things that you were trying to achieve. Yeah, for sure. Um, I will say that Slumdog Millionaire came up a lot in discussions with my creative team, um, but maybe not in the way that you think. We we almost held it as a kind of um, uh, anti example of of what or like sort of what we what not to do i i think that it's it's easy um you know it's 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 very easy and apt to see the trailer it's it's taking place in a similar milieu where, where people are like coming from very disadvantaged backgrounds and for sure there's this there is a great chasm between what the people living in that far off glittering cityscape have and, and what our protagonists have but slumdog millionaire for me is a story of 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 uh, of a kid just being subjected to the most heinous tortures of poverty that like the mind can conjure up. And it's just ultimately the sort of capitalist story of escaping, of the single kid escaping from that plight. And what, what I really loved about getting to know the community where I was teaching was seeing the way that it functioned as a community and how there was some, some deep wisdom there and how that was really under threat. And so a sort of getting ethos for the story was like, you know, um yeah wanting to make not not to like um what to say sugarcoat or 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 uh i'm losing the word right now but not not to sort of like view through rosy colored glasses poverty but at the same time it's it's not a story of of just like t terrible people living impoverished lives it's it's like, I don't know, you know, for example, Lang Hang's family, where when we see him waking up in the beginning and his mom wakes him up and he's with his with his whole family there, there's something in, in that space we, we really, you know, wanted to capture this this real sense of like hominess and care. And, you know, it's it's kind of the, the anti-individualist story of, of about, it's not about escape, it's about like embracing of family and community for me, ultimately. Um, so, so Jake, yeah. as you're speaking and you're and you're explaining this, I look at the film as a whole. That was just one specific thing. But when when you're talking about that and it's a, a, a one larger piece, um, is is that connective tissue part of what you wanted to try and find with the um, Buddhist reincarnation and the AI? I know he was a, a you know a cut off then, and hopefully he'll come back. But I use wanted to fill, finish that question so we can pick it up. Hi. Okay. Uh, hey, Garen. Sorry about that. My my internet just dropped completely. No, that's fine. Um, we, we we can work around it. Did and you didn't get to hear my entire question, but I went through the entire question because what, if we have to edit, it'll be a lot easier for us to edit from that. But I'll pick it up again. And that is, is that when you were just talking about, you know, the community on the micro level, and I'm thinking about the community on the macro level, where, you know, the, the reincarnation and the AI 
are merging to try and connect those those things. Is that part of the connective tissue you're looking to try and get people to understand? Or is that part of the story? Um, can you just repeat the, the last half of the question about sure. uh, the, the AI and the reincarnation? Right. So, yeah. uh, so I'm, I'm one of those people that likes to try and find connective tissue between things. It's just the way I am. Yeah. So when you're talking about, you know, the community of, of, of the family, which is a micro, a microcosm, and then you start, and, and, and the, the themes within the movie are about reincarnation and Buddhism and AI, that's more of a macro. And does that kind mm -hmm. of thing, is, is that what you're kind of just stepping it up as you move through the film? Yeah, totally. There's this idea of of the of the network, of the web. You know, that there's the connections between the brain. There's the connections in a community. There's a connection across lifetimes. There's like the connection between the human and the 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 artificial intelligence, um, and and thinking about uh, the network as like a, a guiding motif. Um, was definitely something that I was interested in exploring and having, yeah, having it stack the macro and the microcosm. And so that, so that my next question was, would be is, you know, and we touched about this a little bit and, and, and we, you know, is technology a good thing, a bad thing, or a thing we need to fear? I um, think about this question all the time. I come from Silicon Valley. I grew up in Palo Alto, California. Uh, so obviously I'm surrounded by people when I go home that are like the total techno utopias and true, true believers. Um, and that freaks me out a lot. I feel personally super alienated by, as I'm sure a lot of people do, ab about the way that um, technology has infiltrated in our lives in oftentimes in ways that are like non-consensual. It's like, we, I just don't have a choice that I have to, I like have to be on the technology. Um, but, but there's, but there's also, there's also stuff about, I mean, it's the easy and, and kind of common answer is that it's complicated, but I really, I, 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 that's sort of like where I come from personally, but also making the movie was just a chance for me to explore this very question. And I think that that's the, the nice thing about making a piece of art is that um, you can sort of get into the realm of nuance and subject suggestion and, and, uh, and like even tap into like unconscious feelings um, that I couldn't hope to express to you over the course of like, uh, you know, a, a a literal conversation with words. There's like, when you're bringing all of these elements together, it's, this is, yeah, if you want to know how, how I really feel about technology, I'd say watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, there is, I had a great question there and I just, I just lost because I was listening to you too closely. But, uh, uh, you just got back from uh, doing some uh, festival stuff uh, in Europe, correct? Yeah. What do you see? I mean, from, from our vantage point, we see movies and theatrical exhibition and showing people people uh, films in a, a theater challenging more so than ever before. And I'm wondering what you observed at, in your travels with the festivals and whether you could share any of that with us. I mean, wow, like the first thing I'll say is that it is it's it's for sure harder, but it feels more vital than ever. There's something about the isolation of this last period in, in like movies are just such an amazing communal experience. And so it it felt like a, a level there's like a level of medicine in in the experience of coming in and and sharing this with other people like for also just like going to watch a lot of movies we, we premiered it at venice and i was super uh fortunate just to get to watch like every day so many great movies and i and i had been i didn't realize how much i was missing that i hadn't had that kind of experience in some years you know and um and so yeah it's it's curious thing right now there's like an extra layer of 
of medicine in the communal experience is, is my main my main takeaway on on that subject it's one of the things that i keep talking. keep going to the theater it's not so much just keep going to theater i just think that film festivals are the salvation of the exhibition industry i mean you know more and more streaming is going on i think film festivals are going to be the place where we have to go to be able to have those communal experiences because at these right are- yeah i mean you know, I made a sci-fi movie. We 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 have three hundred visual effects shots in the movie. There's uh, uh, we we really went to town on the on the sound design. I'm like super happy with how that process came out. We mixed it in an actual movie theater in Cambodia. So the movie is, you know, it's it's made for the big screen and and probably the only chance that any humans are gonna get to see it on the big screen outside of Cambodia, where we'll do a theatrical release is like. Um, I mean, we're going to have a very limited theatrical release in, in the States, but otherwise film festivals are the only, the only chance to get to see this thing in the way that I think it can be like most fully appreciated. Yeah. I tend to agree with that. I'm super grateful to have the opportunity. I never remember and it's the- like, I, I, I really get a, every time that I sit down in the theater and, and, and like, and the lights go down and, and the sound starts enveloping you. And yeah. Well, I, I, I told people, I've been doing this for 50 years. And so what I tell people is movies are my drug of choice. End of story, you know, got to see a movie. It's like, you know, I feel better afterwards, whether it's a drama, comedy, whatever. I just love it. And I love them all. Uh, but I do remember the question that, yeah. I, that, that, that I, that I, that I forgot that I lost track of, but I wanted to ask him, we'll wrap up with that. You you experience you you talked about the experience of being a first time filmmaker, which is what you are, and you mm-hmm. went through a process. What changed in you when you came out of that process? Um, one thing for sure I learned is that I have way more reserves of patience and perseverance <laughs> than I ever knew. It, 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 <laughs> A long time. I was working on this movie for like over five years. Wow. Um, I I don't know if you told me that when I when I started, if like I really would have uh, if I would have been so gung ho to sign up. But um, it was it was really cool how the process unfolded ultimately. And um, yeah, I mean, I I think that I um, I like have come to just care even more deeply about the art of storytelling through this. And, um, yeah. And, and, and I used to be a preschool teacher in a, in a, in a past life. Um, I, I taught preschool for a year and there was something about this process that surprised me and how much it tapped into the same energy I felt hanging out with three-year-olds where it's just make-believe. You have a bunch of grown-ups, super serious and like amazing at what they do, but we're all getting together to play a giant game of make-believe, and to do it on this scale is just the coolest thing that I've ever experienced. So I hope I get to make another. Uh, what a great way to end an interview, man! That was that's wonderful. I love it. Thank you. Um, your film is playing at the Somerville Theater on February nineteenth at seven p.m. Um, I know you can't make it, uh, but uh, the next film you make, we certainly hope you'll stop by and uh, visit us in Boston. Jake Wachtel, thank you so much for joining us from Cambodia. Akun Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Goodbye. Guys.